Yeah, Scott Jack. Hi, Pep. Hi, Jack. Are you um, two goals away from 100 goals in all competitions for this season? Um, I know you played pretty much without a striker throughout last year, but you, is there any sort of surprise from your point of view at the amount of goals you've been able to score this year as a, as a team? First of all, I want to say you will demanding a striker when we're going to win first, I tell you now. Second, uh, I never expect how many goals we're going to score, how many goals we are going to concede. And uh, I said many times, I cannot predict the future, so I don't know. So the fact is, try to play better, better, be consistent behind, and play our game was more clear, clear, and always I believe as much chances you create, closer you are to score a goal. And uh, we are not a guy that's going to score maybe 20, 25, 30 goals, but we have to try to make three or four players more than 20, 10, 12, we'll be there. These statistics never miss. So when you have three or four players above 10, 12 goals, always you will be close to to end the titles. And we are in this in this period, you know. Riyad score a goal, Raheem, Phil, Kevin score more goals than ever. Bernardo hopefully can what he has done in the in the Champions League and do it in the Premier League and Gundogan has the ability to do it, play less recently but has the ability to do it and and yeah, um, we need we need the players up front, you know, the ability to score goals. Because you have you have got a couple of them that could make could hit twenty this year. If you look at you know, if Raheem can't continues or uh, hopefully, Foden, hopefully as much as possible. And thirty, if they want, <laughs> will not be a problem. But uh, but uh, I'm not. I'm not uh, honestly concerned about that. I wanted their ambition and every player to say, I want to score more, and more, and I want to score goals. That would be nice. But but uh, no, it's the game. The game. The way we play it is the the most important thing. Can I just ask what what are the specific problems that Tottenham have, have given you over the years? Because they do seem to. I don't know. I'm not there. No, no, no. What Tottenham ah, they've twice. given? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the quality, the transitions are so good. You know, they didn't need anything, especially there. We were not except one in these years. Always we beat them once, just in the Premier League when we played there away. So it was the maybe the toughest opening we we faced away, playing really good. So all the times we played there, we played really well, but we were not able to 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 win games. And uh, they need they need few. The transitions are so quick. And always, I said when I arrived, when I land in in Manchester and here in England, the team who impressed the most was the first Tottenham I met with. Uh, you know, with Pochettino, with uh, Dele Alli was younger, and Harry Kane, and Ericsson, Kyle, and Dembele, and Dyer in the middle. I said, "Wow, with Bertongen, with this team impressed me." So. And I said, see, if this team is the four or five in the table right now, I can imagine we'll be in the top. Now I realize that the Premier League is completely different. I never found in other countries the four in the table, the quality, physicality, that team in the way they good they play. But they, they were playing, I think, the year before against Leicester to be champion. And, and with Chelsea was there, qualified for the Champions League every season in normal ways. And Tottenham always have been there, always. The fact they didn't get the titles, I don't know, because I'm not there, the reality, but the quality is there, so... And this surrounded that, uh, Tottenham is in bad moment, in bad moment, you know, and Antonio said, ah, we cannot qualify, that I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I know how competitors they are, I know the manager, how com huge competitor it is, and tomorrow will be a tough physical and concentrated team. Game. Hi, Pep. Um, last season, it felt like you took some teams by surprise because you didn't have a, a recognised striker up front. But this season, obviously, everyone has known that you've not got it. Has it felt more difficult to to beat teams and to break them down without having that recognised striker? Mm, so, yeah, against Benford was more difficult. Against Norwich, no. In 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 Portugal, and four shoots, four goals, or four shoots, three goals. So <laughs> depends. It did how many times we arrived together with the ball. So we need a team, we fly, we walk, we run with the ball all together. If the, our game is open, the opens are better. Are better. So that's why we need a good process, good game. And, and, and after, when we travel the ball, we are able to arrive with a lot of people to the box. The first goal we score, we have five players in the box. When we don't travel with the ball, we cannot arrive with five players in the box. And we don't have that type of players like 
can action the 30, 40 meters. First of all, I don't like it. The second, we don't have the quality of these players to do it. And Liam Delap is is back fit. He, he doesn't seem like a sort of typical player for this team in some respects, but is he kind of the closest profile to the sort of striker you were looking for last summer? Well, first of all, he's so young, he's 90 years old, so important is, is if he is training with us and playing less than minutes with us because we have injured players is because uh, he can be here otherwise he could not be here but he's 90 years old so the 90 years old for Phil Foden is completely was completely different from Liam so that's why patient the minutes take he was in the right moment in one cross from Fernandinho it came there who got the score scored a goal that is allowed it against against Fulham so I think he had that, that feeling, but still, he's a player has to improve, improve a lot, a lot in in the first movements, in the first touches, in the in the high level is completely different than the academy. But he's there and training every day and practicing with our staff and with uh, with his mates, he will improve. <coughs> Hi, but can I just ask you a couple on Raheem Sterling? He struggled a little bit at the start of the season, but his forms picked up quite a lot recently. What, what do you think the change has been for him? A question for him. Yeah, I'm so glad. His happiness in his, in his best and uh, in best form. I'm so glad. But in terms of his confidence levels, when you, you obviously work with him on a daily basis, how high is his confidence at the moment? He's higher. Always the goal is, con- is consequence of his confidence. And the confidence comes of his smile, his mood. You cannot play good when your mood is down. It's impossible. You cannot improve when your mood is down. It's impossible. Good faces. <laughs> you cannot imagine how important it is. When you are all the time complaining, I'm not talking about Rahim because it's not the case. It was not the case. But in general, when someone was here complaining about lack of minutes or complaining about whatever, you cannot be better. You cannot improve and you are going to perform bad. When the other things happen, you see... I saw the game first half against Sporting de Lisboa because we need some clips to understand what we have done well and not well. Um, and you see the intensity that he goes in all his movements, defensively, especially offensively as well. So it's magnificent. It's what Rahim has done many, many years together and becoming, in terms of stats, in terms of national team, and key and a key player. And. Uh, and for us, for me personally, I'm very glad he's back and he's best because we need him, of course, everyone, but we need him, him as well. And you always value players that can play in different positions. I know your front three is quite fluid, but he, he seems to be playing as well on the left as he as he does on the right this season. Well, against, against Chelsea was the more decisive players that we, we, we had in playing the right and he made an incredible movement against Marcos Alonso. So... He plays in right. Sometimes we need right foot in the right side, left foot in left side. Sometimes don't. It depends after for the position for the players playing in the middle, for the how the opponents defend. So, but he can play, and even I think he can play when we need a striker in behind movements more, not drop. You know there. I think alongside to to Gabriel is is the best that we have right now. Farhan was the best in that terms in the movement as striker. And, and but Rahim is, is that? Yeah, hi Pep. You've signed um, Julian Alvarez for next season. Do you still think you will look for a new striker this summer, or could he be the man to, to come in and be the, the striker? The club is working to watching managers, keepers, fullbacks, uh, central defenders, attacking midfielders, strikers. It's never stop. But you believe, no, no, now we have to settle the team. Knock the door, five players say that want to leave. We have to be ready, mm. you know. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, Julian scored three goals, had three in the last game in, in River Plate, and and I think Man City make an incredible deal because he's a player he moves really well. The, the goal he scored was a like Bardi movement, mm-hmm. and um, and I think yeah, next next season will will be with Man City with us, and we will see what happen in the future. Go to Jamie on the screen, please. Jamie. Hi, Pat. The bigger, the, big, the, the bigger stars are in the screen. Uh, that's in uh, Here's the humble people, and there is, you know, 9-11. He cannot take the car to come here. 
Very kindly, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the win, James. You hear me? Tell me. It's okay. If you were managing you against your Manchester City team, how would you try and beat it? I don't know. I didn't think, I didn't think about it. Good question. This is not going to happen. <laughs> <coughs> I suppose it's about asking where do you think you can improve? You know, in your team, where do you, I'm, I'm not going to say you've got weaknesses, but you know, where do you, you look at your team and think, hmm, maybe you could do a little bit better? Because you're always trying to improve. Right? There are movements. It depends where where is our ball, and the opponent is moving. That we have to move better and be in the positions better. Still, we are distracted. The players that we are playing, they are away for the action is doing in in the game. Still, we are distracted. We are not focused. So there are actions that we can do better. And of course, the controls, the finishing, the shoots, the how defend boxes, many, many things. So in the table, you know, in the machines in the video everything is, is easy but when the players move and the ball move everything is different it's more difficult any more guys I don't see any hands oh sorry get in uh, uh, when you look back at, at last summer and, and your sort of pursuit of Harry Kane which didn't come off and then your disappointment at the time for, for many reasons probably on many levels and then the season has panned out how it has do you ever sort of think that those sort of sliding doors moments can be positives? I want to I wanna, I wanna say something clear. I never was in my 11, 12 year career disappointed about the club. Cannot possibly do what, uh, what uh, with the transfer market or wherever. Never, never create a fire to my club here because I represent the club and the club is always beyond and above <coughs> myself. But by far never when we have some talks and we cannot agree because sometimes we are not agree we do it internally but always I I think they are right so we tried but it was far away to, to be done because Tottenham was clear this is not going to happen and when that happened two or three or four times it's over and after we saw the squad <coughs> and the way we played I said we are not sure what we have to do, what you have to go. So, and start to do. But now the people say, ah, we're brilliant. No, Hurricane didn't come and and everything is going well. But I didn't know it when we lost against Tottenham in the first game and we lost uh, against Leicester in the Community Shield. So, the season now, today is here, but in three weeks, I don't know what's going to happen. So, but I, that's why I'm not, I'm not thinking about, okay, we have these players. Like I put in my first season, second, third, four, five, and now six. I know it's always the light. So the the club give me that because what what can we do together? And this is this is the point. And maybe we'll have a, a proper striker, we will play with a striker. But for the quality we have, we have to adapt. In some movements I adapt for the quality for the players, not to just for my ideas. Or I like to be all the time in the way it's going to happen. It's absurd. <laughs> so no. So I, I adapt for the good moments, for the the, the the performance for the players, and and for many reasons I adapt, and and it's it's not 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 the problem, honestly. So, first season I played with Fabian Delph and Alex Inchenko, the typical number ten. We came from Ukraine, like a left back. And what is the problem? I'm not asking to go up and down, up and down, like I don't know, a typical left back. So okay, I adapt the quality to the movements we have to. To, to play and and that's why I never never so club is beyond above everyone so and I know the club do the best for me the best I know I know them the guys the best and when we lose I say oh, we are sad but no, we don't start to point in this you fall you fall you fall you fall you fall the players don't do it to me I don't do it to the players it's happened okay what we can do to improve that in terms of right now the present or maybe in summertime in a, in the now transfer market. And I love to work in this way. I love it. Because they know it's not going bad and bad and bad. We share hands and we'll break you know, the relation because we are not good enough to break or bring the team in a high, high level. 
but it's not about, you know, I, I don't feel they talk bad behind me to the media or to the players or to the chairmen or whatever when I have bad results. We are sad, we sleep bad that night, the day after we can do better, we can do better. And that is, that's why I'm happy here. No, in other clubs, so uh, how good you are when you lose? What's the problem? So, yeah, it's football. The opponent play. We are winning 4 0 <laughs> against Leicester in 20 minutes for three. Tell me one person in the whole world, not even me, 4 3 after t- uh, 20 minutes was 4 0. It's happened. But well, what you can do to improve, they change the shape, they play in one way, four in the back, after play five. We did uh, adapt quick, we suffer, we concede, the anxious, the nervous. And, <coughs> and this is. This is the process has to be in football. Arrive at the end of the season, growing and growing, and try to play today better than yesterday and tomorrow worse than today, step by step. And arrive at the end of the season with, a, with chances to, to fight for the titles. And he said, oh, okay, you lose against Liverpool. What's the problem? They are too good. <laughs> can happen. Important is being there to fight and okay, still there and tomorrow and after an ever at Goodison Park and United home, Peterborough before, and, and game by game to try to play better. It doesn't matter who plays. This is the way we're working here and, and I think it's going to happen and we continue to do it. Can you just finish with Dom on the screen, please, guys? Hello, uh, <coughs> Just before on Ian's question about Conte's impact in England, you said about copy and paste in football, you see this with, we saw it with the three centre-backs at the time. Do you see elements of copy and paste with some of your style, whether it's the build-up, whether it's how you make your high press in, your positional play? Do you see some copy and paste of your style of football now? No, I, I, no, I think the, no, I think the copy is because sometimes when there's a World Cup and win French, the last once, you know, or, or whatever, said, OK, this is the football. We have to play like French play, you know? And European champion is Chelsea. We have to play like Chelsea play. And always we want to think it's a mistake. Everyone has to do what, uh, what he feels, but the reality is like this. So. Even even myself against against uh, Chelsea when Conte played with five here when we lost uh, one three the first season yeah we played with five in the back we led away with win back what a decision I made <laughs> so so we play five in the back so you know sometimes you, we try to 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 you know to, to find solutions when you feel mm. it's not going well something and I feel that many many teams we face a lot of teams with five in the back many. Many, many, many teams play five in the back. Many. So, and I think, I don't know, before Conte arrived here, if many teams in England play five in the back. I don't know. So the impact of him was, was really good here in England. We'll leave it there. Thank you, okay, guys. Thank you. <laughs>